William. Uh, I keep talking about 1992 and the Canadian mm. Tories when they were <clears throat> reduced to two seats. Yeah. Um, is there a flaw for the UK Tories here? Oh, there is a flaw. I mean, the two-party system that we have mm. protects the weaker party, doesn't it? That's, that's how mm. it works. That's what the Canadians and, thought. Though. Yeah, no, but we're in different times. So I mm. think we, we're in a sort of perma-crisis. We've had the GFC and mm. then we had COVID and we've had, you know, it's literally mm. one thing after another. And the public, the ordinary members of, you know, the country... They can see that we're very poorly governed, very, very mm. poorly governed. And, yeah, I think the, the Tory party is in deep, deep trouble. I think the main reason for that is that it doesn't actually have any values. It's well yes. known. Its only value is to, to have power. It doesn't actually believe in anything. And the word that I always use to describe them is indifference. Mm. They're totally indifferent to what is made where and by whom, mm. even if it's slavery. They're not bothered about that. They don't care who runs our railways. They don't care who owns the water system in London. Mm. They just really don't care about anything. And I think the public have had enough of it, and I think they will certainly uh, dispatch them in the next election. For, for people who don't know, your party has its... Uh, and that's, you know, people under 40 or 50 or mm. whatever, but your party has its roots in a breakaway faction uh, from uh, from the Labour Party 40-something yeah. years ago. Yeah. Now, on the continent, when mm. we see these new parties mm. emerged, emerge, whether you're talking about Marine Le Pen or Georgia Maloney, they're, they're basically people who are sort of rather leftish fiscally. They're mm. not going to disturb mm. the post-war welfare state mm. in those... But they're culturally conservative. That's right. And they, and they seem to have found that as the sweet spot in continental politics, yeah. um, culturally conservative but fiscally kind of liberal. Does that translate to the Westminster system and to, it, and to His Majesty's dominions? I think the first-past-the-post system puts a very, very high wall around the two existing parties, so it's mm. very difficult. But if you look at value divides and what people actually believe, mm. about half of the public... Uh, agree with our basic offer, which is traditional social conservatism, faith, flag and family, you might mm. call it, mm. a bit of patriotism, uh, caring about industry and, mm. and so on, the foundations of society. And uh, they combine that with a little bit of left-wing economics, which mm. is, in our case, is caring about trade. Uh, you know, they, people care about who runs the railways. People mm. want the utilities uh, nationalised and under state control. Mm. It, basically, the sort of Thatcherite offer hasn't conserved anything. It's, it, so I would, I've always argued that actually, if you're a social conservative, you want a little bit of left-wing uh, economics in there as well right. uh, to offer the protection. And you saw that in the Brexit vote, actually. A lot of people thought, well, what are, what are people voting for? Yeah, well, yeah. they certainly weren't voting to deindustrialize and, and, you know, and gut your industry and sh you know, ship all your jobs no. over to China.